Hey sheepies, before we dive right into our top 10 indies of the year, just wanted to let you know that you may want to hang around until the very end of the video for a special announcement. Wink wink, nudge nudge, if you catch my drift. But enough with the tantalizing foreplay, on with the show! What's up guys, I'm Chill Pill and hoop boy 2017, am I right? This year was just unbelievably amazing as far as major game releases go. Nintendo successfully launched one of their most popular consoles to date alongside not one, but two strong contenders for Game of the Year. Resident Evil finally saw a return to its horror roots, and a Sonic game actually managed to break 80 on Metacritic for the first time in what feels like generations. The unending slew of amazing must-play AAA games released in 2017 was absolutely relentless. My own personal backlog is just getting ridiculous at this point. But let's not forget about the little guys in the gaming industry. The number of phenomenal indie games released in 2017 was staggering, so narrowing down our choices to the top 10 of the year was understandably difficult. But after much deliberation, we done did it. Some quick rules. All indies released this year are fair game for our list, but games in early access or new DLC for older games will be excluded. So, without further ado, here's our top 10 indies of 2017. Kicking off our list this year, we have What Remains of Edith Finch. This game got a lot of attention and critical acclaim upon its release, and with good reason, too. What Edith Finch does with its story, it does so well and delivers one of the most interesting narratives of any game this year. In it, you play as a young woman named Edith who returns home to the maze-like Finch Manor, which looks surprisingly like a cross between a Dr. Seuss-esque house and the burrow from Harry Potter, to learn about her family's cursed history. What transpires is truly a series of unfortunate events as Edith relives each of her family members' final moments on Earth before meeting their untimely demises, and the way the devs frame each of these individual stories makes them truly creative and compelling experiences then why is this game so dang far down the list, you may be asking? Well, besides being an interactive storybook, Edith Finch doesn't have much else going for it. Sure, the art is pretty to look at and the design of the house is whimsical and fun, if not a bit on the hoardy side, but the game is completely devoid of any sort of gameplay and there's little reason for you to revisit the Finch Manor after your first playthrough. Well, maybe to replay this awesome segment with the shark again. In fact, Giant Sparrow should just make this their next game. Shark Roller 2018, Oh yeah, baby! Coming in at number 9, we have the cutesy, unassuming anime dating sim, Doki Doki Literature Club. I'm typically not a big dating simulator kind of guy. In fact, the last one I played that even came close to the genre was... Uh... Yeah, moving on. Team Salvato's latest game has you playing as a run-of-the-mill otaku that gets invited by his adorable neighbor to join the school's literature club. You get to know the other anime tropes, I mean club members, through their various poems and other daily goings-on, eventually resulting in some sweet, sweet alone time with your waifu choice. The game is purely text-based, has practically no voice acting, has zero animation whatsoever, and the music can get repetitive quickly. Well, this game just sounds absolutely, positively boring. Why even have it on the list at all? Well, like anyone who's played this game will tell you, it isn't the first half that makes Doki Doki so awesome. When the second half finally hits, it hits hard. Things get super f***ed up and dark really quick, and the game obliterates the fourth wall as it seemingly starts to fall apart piece by piece. I'm just gonna leave it at that. This game is really something that you should experience on your own, and since it's so short, not to mention free on Steam, you really have no excuse not to see for yourself why it made this list. At number 8, we have Thimbleweed Park. Growing up in the 90s, I remember playing point-and-click adventure games with my sister on our old-ass Macintosh computer. Don't laugh. Without this thing, you wouldn't be watching this video on your iPhone today. So, when I first saw the trailer for Thimbleweed Park, I was overcome with some tingly nostalgia feels. A couple of the guys who used to work at Lucasfilm Games, rest in peace, decided to revitalize this whole genre by developing a game that harkens back to the other classic point-and-click titles they had previously worked on, such as Maniac Mansion and The Secret of Monkey Island. And I gotta say, they frickin' nailed it. The retro pixel art looks surprisingly great on an HD computer monitor or TV screen, the voice actors do a great job bringing the characters to life, and the writing is genuinely hilarious with plenty of subtle nods to the old Lucasfilm games. 
Exploring a town to solve a horrific murder mystery has never been more fun. I do have some minor gripes with the game, though. While hysterical for the most part, the humor in Thimbleweed may not hit home with everyone and some of the jokes seemed heavy-handed. Ransom the Clown, anyone? Also, pro tip, try to play on a PC if you can since using a controller for this style of game can feel very cumbersome. I mean, come on, it's called point and click for a reason, guys. This next game is number seven on our list, but it really should be number four. Get it? Four? <laughs> I'm clever. Anyways, coming to us from the Down Under devs at Sidebar Games, Golf Story is an indie exclusive for the Nintendo Switch that combines RPG elements with classic Mario Golf gameplay. This game had me sucked in from the get-go. I really enjoyed the gorgeous pixel art, the writing and humor were reminiscent of games like Earthbound, and the golfing mechanics were solid. Well, except for putting. I can't tell you how many times I dropped from birdie to par due to missing a putt because the only thing to indicate how the green breaks is a stupid little arrow that does nothing more than tell you, eh, I don't know, I guess your ball will roll this way. I'm not salty, you're salty. Shoddy putting mechanics aside, Golf Story's overall charm and attention to detail is really what got me hooked on this game. Whether it's avoiding a gaggle of geese on the green, bouncing your ball off the back of a turtle to cross the lake, or just digging for buried treasure, this is one fun indie that has clearly avoided the rough. A lot of different 2D platformers came out this year, ranging from great to, eh, it's okay, to, ugh, bubsy. But there was one in particular that really caught my eye. I know Slime Son may not look like much at first with its simplistic 8-bit art and its oh-so-extensive palette of four different colors, but trust me, once you try the first few levels, you won't want to put it down. In Slime Son, you play as a kawaii gob of goo that gets eaten by a giant worm and now must jump and climb her way around a plethora of organ-themed levels to escape the beast belly and live to slime another day. Not the most compelling of stories, but I don't care, because that platforming is tight, son. Like Super Meat Boy but with boogers. The controls are precise, and the fact that you restart the level instantly upon your death means you'll never get taken out of the fast-paced fun by long load times. And you better get to the goal quick, or you'll be taking a dip in the worm's gastric juices. There are also a lot of customizable options for you and your bird buddy that range from purely cosmetic to completely changing the way Slime Son looks and feels. In addition, you can spend all your hard-earned apples on stuff that influences the look of the game as well. Now you can enjoy the game's slimy goodness through a nauseating, headache-inducing Virtual Boy filter. Ugh, it's like Christmas 95 all over again. What do you get when you combine cutesy Animal Crossing characters with angsty millennials? Our pick for number five, of course. In Night in the Woods, you play as a 20-year-old college dropout named May who returns to her hometown of Possum Springs after struggling with her debilitating mental issues while in school. After reuniting with her old friends and family, she comes to find that the town's economy is in the toilet ever since the coal mine shut down and now people, animals, have started to mysteriously go missing. This game's pastel colored art is very pleasant to look at and the gameplay can be fairly diverse, like when May goes to band practice and it plays out like a Guitar Hero minigame. But it's the intriguing characters and strong narrative that were by far the most engrossing factors to me. I found myself personally identifying with several NPCs and was surprised at how close to home some of the game's themes hit. This is supposed to be a cute game with furry woodland critters. Quit being say it! Oh well. If you have a PS4, Xbox One, or Steam, you should really give this game a try right meow. I know that pun was pretty bad, but I give zero fox. If you follow our channel, which you should, you'll be very familiar with our number four choice. We did a full review on Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice back in October of this year, and if you want a more in-depth look at this phenomenal game, you can check it out at the link below. After this video, of course. There isn't much else to say about this game that we didn't three months ago, but just to reiterate on some of the high points, the binaural audio sound design is amazing, the art and mocap look fantastic, and the narrative covers the touchy subject of mental illness in a very professional manner. Also, props to the Senua devs at Team Ninja for winning Best Audio Design and Games for Impact at the VGAs this year, and Melina Jurgens definitely earned that award for Best Performance. Hellblade was an awesome game, and I know I'm not the only one that's excited to see what's next for this independent AAA developer. Get those insulin shots ready, guys, because our number three pick is so gosh dang sweet, it might just give you a diabetes. 
After the lackluster release of Ukulele earlier this year, I was a little bit wary about playing through yet another indie 3D platformer, but boy, did a hat in time put those worries to bed. This game wears its retro platformer inspirations on its sleeve and has this aesthetic that makes it seem as though it could have been some long-lost hidden gem on the GameCube or PS2. The art and character designs are vibrant and adorable, the soundtrack is impressive, the writing and voice acting are really cute, and the controls are responsive and fun. Well, mostly. I had some issues pulling off Hat Kid's dive attack at times, and the camera can be a bit unruly. But most important of all, hats! Not only do they make our heroine look super fashionable and somehow even more lovable, they also add a fun new layer to the game's already enjoyable platforming. Now that I think of it, an awful lot of hat-based adventure games that came out this year. But, A Hat in Time was technically released first, so who really copied whom, Mario Odyssey? I can't really think of a good way to end this section, so here's Hat Kid writing on a Roomba. Our number two choice probably won't be all that surprising to many people. You'd be hard pressed to find a single top 10 games list this year that doesn't have this one on it. After what feels like 14 billion years in development, Cuphead finally came out in September to resounding critical acclaim. With its award-winning hand-drawn 1930s cartoon art style, not to mention that perfectly complimentary jazz soundtrack, Cuphead was easily the most visually striking game released this year, but perhaps its most appealing aspect, to the hardcore gaming community at least, was the notoriously difficult Contra-esque run-and-gun gameplay. Now it's no secret that I can be a bit of a video game masochist, but Cuphead is on a whole other level of hard. Basically, every boss boils down to about an hour or so of practice to memorize all their attack patterns to finally beat them in a fight that should last about two to three minutes tops. FUN! No, for real. So, if you have an Xbox or Steam account and don't have this game already, correct this terrible wrongdoing and get ready to have the most fun you'll ever have tearing your hair out over an anthropomorphic gingerbread house. You know, probably. Before we reveal our number one pick, let's take a look at the obligatory honorable mentions. I'm coming back to the surface through the alleys of my mind Everything here is broken I need time to make it right Finally, the moment y'all been waiting for. Our number one indie of 2017 is... Hollow Knight. I don't feel like this game gets the recognition it deserves. It kinda seems like its debut was overshadowed by Horizon Zero Dawn coming out just four days after its release, followed shortly by the launch of the Nintendo Switch and Zelda a week later. Poor little bug got squashed before he really got his time to shine. Which is a shame because holy crap is this game amazing. Hollow Knight is exceptionally atmospheric and combines the mysterious tone of a Metroid game with the esoteric storytelling of Dark Souls and the character design of, I don't know, the Bug's Life, I guess? In the beginning areas of Hollow Nest, the art style starts out very drab and dreary, but then slowly starts to become more vibrant and varied as you explore more and more of the game's impressively vast map. The music fits the tone of Hollow Knight perfectly, the classic Metroidvania mechanics of picking up new power-ups to reach new areas is very rewarding, and spending your geos to buy different badges that change how the knight controls adds a lot of variety to the gameplay. And the combat. Oh, the combat. It's a good thing the controls aren't buggy, <clears throat> because these boss fights require extreme concentration and precision to master. And when you finally beat them, man does it feel good. It's clear that Team Cherry put a lot of time and care into this game and it really does deserve every last bit of praise it gets. So basically, you need to try this game and I won't stop bugging you guys until you do. 
So, who likes free stuff? As a thank you to all our loyal viewers, we are announcing our official Out With The Old Indie With The New giveaway. All you have to do is follow the instructions on screen and maybe you could score a free copy of one of the games on this here list. We will be announcing the winner next week, so be looking for that on any of our social media outlets. Good luck, y'all. There you have it, the most irrefutably perfect list of indie games for 2017. Just kidding, we want to hear from you. What were your favorite indies this year? Be sure to let us know in the comments below and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Black Shivigia for more sheepy shenanigans. And we'll see you guys in 2018. Happy holidays!